Hi, I'm Chris and I'm one of the Airfix designers. So I uh, got the sort of dubious honour um, of designing the Spitfire. So um, yeah, uh, designing the, the, the plastic bits, uh, the, you know, the decals and the, the artwork and the instructions all done um, by the people in the team, but I, I got to do the plastic bits. For Airfix particularly, the Spitfire is of course a really iconic product um, and in this scale it was something really quite special and um, uh, it's the second of these large scale kits that I've done, um, I thought that might have made it easier <laughs> but uh, it didn't, uh, but it was, yeah I knew, I knew it was going to be uh, quite a special product to get to work on so it was, yeah, it was a real honour. I think one of the main things that I realised early on about this was that uh, Spitfires are so popular and so well known and so well researched that uh, there'd be a lot of people who knew if I'd got it wrong. <laughs> um, obviously, all of uh, counter to that, there's, there's a lot of information available, which is obviously a real big plus. But yeah, it, it's something that people are very passionate about, and I knew that was going to make it trickier. Uh, would have less leeway for error. <laughs> I'm Luke Slaney Hewitt and I'm the researcher for Airfix. So I joined the project pretty late on. Um, sort of the 3D print or the SLA had been done. Um, so I, I didn't play a part in the initial creation of the model, uh, but there's a long way to go from when 3D print happens to production. Uh, and I, I played a part in the I researched the cockpit, which was a part that was seriously lacking um, when it had gone to 3D print. Uh, and as part of that, you know, picked up on quite a few things that were included in the finished model. Um, that's where I mainly focused. There were bits across the whole airframe that we picked up on as well. So the Mark IX Spitfire is sort of regarded as the, the ultimate Merlin powered Spitfire. Um, it combines those classic lines of the Mark I's um, with sort of the upgraded, the, the two-stage Merlin um, that sort of makes it the ultimate uh, before you start going on to Griffin powered, uh, where you start going away from what was the original design. Uh, so there are five schemes, uh, and that was another part that I played uh, within the development of the model. Uh, so the A scheme is that of Johnny Plagis, um, a Greek Rhodesian ace. Um, on the box front, you see his aircraft before he actually joined the squadron. Uh, so patrolling the convoys on D-Day. Uh, but within the layout, there are sort of three sub-schemes. So the one that, as it appeared on 6th of June, 1944, um, there is how Johnny Plagis sort of inherited the aircraft um, you know, when he first received it. Uh, there's also where it went to half fuselage bands um, and also uh, sort of there was a presentation Late on, I believe it was November of 1944, and the scheme was slightly changed to represent uh, a city of the Persian Gulf because number 126 Squadron was Persian Gulf Squadron. Um, so there are sort of three sub schemes. So there's also the B, B and C schemes, uh, which shows Johnny Johnson's aircraft, EN 398, um, when Johnny Johnson had the aircraft, but also before when it was um, Ian Kelty's aircraft featuring a bit of nose art. Um, originally we had decided just to show EM398 with Kelty, but sort of decided no, if you're doing a Mark 9C you have to include Johnny Johnson. So a late call was made to include it. Uh, then we've got the D scheme, which is a US scheme, uh, where they were based out of Italy. Uh, Garth Jarrod's aircraft, he was the commanding officer of the squadron uh, and also uh, my personal favorite scheme the the E scheme uh, which is sort of a, a French uh, reconnaissance squadron um, that had these uh, Spitfire Mark 9s with clip wings uh, and and sort of research material was really limited on on that scheme in particular there was sort of only one grainy photograph but we've managed to piece it piece it together and um, had a good stab at it and uh, you know for me it's it's the highlight of the boxing the, my favourite bit of the Spitfire 
uh, it's probably also the bit that I struggled with the most, as is often the way, isn't it? Um, but is the engine. Um, they, 24 scale, these engines just create such lovely little models in their, in their own right. Uh, and it was really difficult to get the information. I really struggled to feel confident about it, but it, it's an area which I really enjoy building up now. Um, yeah. In this large scale, so the, the expectation for um, the amount of detail you have is, is really high, uh, which is obviously a bit of a challenge. It's, it's like time consuming. Um, even if it, even if like the adding detail isn't necessarily loads more skill, it does require a lot more time um, to to fill it out. And then and then the surface detail that is actually quite different at this scale, where you're trying to create um, the look of like warped metal in areas, and and just that vast quantity of rivets uh, is mind-numbingly dull. <laughs> and it creates a really large file for the computer, which then starts to go really slowly and that gets really tedious. So it's, I, th I think the, the main challenge is, it is, is the, like the vast quantity of data that begins to become quite unwieldy, unwilled, un unwill, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Complicated. <laughs> so there are a lot of different sort of uh reasons we can decide on the scheme. There's always the notability, so you know, has a famous pilot flown that aircraft, um, has it been involved in a in a famous action, so you know, Guy Gibson's Dam Buster, you know, is 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 a no-brainer if you're doing a, a Lancaster uh, B3 special. Um, but there's also sort of the opposite of that um, where you're you're also trying to show schemes that have never been represented in model form before and um, you want to bring something new and exciting to the hobby which is becoming harder and harder as you know the hobby evolves and matures um, you know there's, there's only so many aircraft in the world to, to show um, and and to make it interesting uh, or find an interesting scheme is becoming harder um, and that's another thing you want an underrepresented kit but you also want it to be interesting you want it to have a certain feature to it you want it to um sort of tick a few boxes um you know if it's got nose art that's always good but there's also what bits do we have in the box so across a boxing you'll want to make sure that you're using all the option parts where you can so if something has a different aerial mount um, sort of you want your A scheme with it and B scheme without to make sure that you're sort of maximizing it and if people want to use those bits there's, a, there's an adequate scheme for it. So those are sort of where we look for schemes. It's hard to put a number on it so uh, we probably um, looked at you know, well over a hundred schemes um, in varying detail uh, so you know you might get down to a short list of 20 um, that you sort of whittle away by, you know, how strong is the scheme, how certain are we that it's, um, you know, using the correct bits, it hasn't got extra bits. Um, and yeah, eventually you get down to five, but it's hard to put an exact number on it. It's that many, um, you know, you're looking at photos all, all day for weeks on end, trying to find notable things or reading books and trying to find, aircraft that are written about but might not be there might not be images for so you're trying to tie them up together so it, it's time consuming and you go through that many if i was to try and track it it would almost be impossible i knew that obviously fx has has done a 24 scale spitfire before um but many years ago and i actually took the intentional uh like step to not look at that to not be influenced by it um i wanted this to be something kind of new, fresh, without looking at that old one. I knew, uh, I don't know, it was great for the time, but uh, also our, our sort of product has moved on and our processes have moved on. And I wanted to approach it quite fresh. Obviously, I looked at um, other Spitfires we'd made in different scales uh, and other kits we'd done in 24 scale and, and see what might work. But yeah, so I, I just she didn't look at that for this. Um, Hopefully it'll be a better kit. <laughs> so a lot of, after working on a project like this for 
uh, it's actually ended up kind of being a couple of years. Um, and then there's a bit of a delay before the announce happens, uh, an announcement happens. Um, but it's still something that's really nerve wracking. Um, and you hope that it will be received well after that much effort. Uh, and and it, I guess because of what it is as, as a product, um, just the nature of it, it's, it's had more attention than maybe other stuff that I've worked on, which I'm equally as proud of and, and, and have enjoyed, like plenty of other kits I've enjoyed just, just as much. Uh, but because of what this is, it's had a lot more attention, um, which is more worrying, <laughs> uh, but also exciting. And yeah, I just I hope it will be well received when people get their hands on it. So this, this project, we uh, have had existing data, of course, we've made lots of different Spitfires. While I had to scale that data up, there was, there was some good data there. Uh, but the cowling around the engine was a bit different um, in the Mark 9 to other, other Spitfires we've done. And, uh, and actually, generally for Spitfires we've got in the past, we've had this, um, what we call this offset tables, which we've had for a few different projects. We don't always get them. Uh, and on the face of it, they look really boring. It's just a big um, like spreadsheet of numbers. Um, and it took me a while when I first started working here to understand how they work, but Matt uh, managed to sort of help me get my head around it. And essentially what, what this table of numbers is, is like a, if you plot it out, it becomes a dot to dot for the shape. Um, you get every station, every like cross section uh, has every, like all its, its points mapped out by this offset table. Uh, and so we had this for the, the different shape of the cowling for the Mark 9. Um, and so it's sort of really satisfying, to be honest. Even if it might seem dull, I find it really satisfying of plotting all these numbers out. Uh, and then as you go, the shape builds up almost. You know, you know why dot to dot is a really fun game as you're a kid. It's, it's like these little incremental steps eventually create, create a whole fluid shape. Um, really fortunate to have had that data. Otherwise, it would have been quite tricky to get right. It's an honour uh, to get to do a project like this or to be trusted, I guess, uh, mostly that, to be trusted with a project like this. Um, shows that, uh, yeah, people have more confidence in my skill than I necessarily do, which is, I guess, uh, a nice thing to know. Um, it's, it is a project that we worked well together on. I had to, like, there's, there's a, you know, more knowledge in the group about Spitfires than I, than I have on my own, um, for sure. Uh, and and getting to work and learn from other people and, and get the advice. Uh, there's no way I could have done this um, half as good uh, if I if there wasn't the team really at all. Um, but it was a privilege and an honour to to be uh, trusted with the overall design. Um, as I said, I just uh, hope that it shows and, and hope that it, uh, that it's a fun product and people enjoy building it up and. Yeah, it's it, getting to see this built up and painted for the first time um, is amazing. Like it, it, it has so much more life to it. It's an interesting thing about uh, this product um, is that it's not finished when the customer buys it, of, of course. And, and that's kind of quite different to most other things, isn't it? Uh, and actually it only gets finished at this stage. Um, and so the thing that I, I work on is half a product in a way, like it, it's not fully there and, and so I don't get to see it complete um, until it's in the hand of, of much more skilled modelers than I am. I, I, can, I can do the shape stuff, I can do the CAD stuff, um, the injection moulding stuff, I kind of get my head around. And, um, but I am by no means an ex a, like a, a, a skilled painter or a weatherer or any of that and, and so I, I eagerly await getting to see it painted. It just brings it so much more to life uh, when, the, when uh, kind of an enthusiast modeler gets their hands on it and gets to pour their time and their skill into it. So it's hugely important to me that, you know, I've, I've worked on this project. Um, it's something I'm quite proud of um, to say that I've worked on a, a, a Spitfire, uh, obviously a new super kit is great. Um, I'm a local boy originally, so I, I come from surrounding area near Margate. Grew up coming to Hornby Visitor Centre. Um, you know, all, I was always interested in aviation, so to be working on the Airfix brand is amazing. 
um, and the Spitfire is probably my first project that I was involved with um, to some degree so so it's really significant and I'm sure I'll look back on it and, and sort of think well you know that was the start of however many years.